Hey guys, it's Penn Kessering and welcome back to the channel. About a year or so ago, I released a video in which I listed every single Imperial TIE Fighter, and with the release of the Solo movie and the Rise of Skywalker, uh, not to mention all the video games and TV shows and comics that have been released, there have been quite a few new TIE Fighters introduced, so in this video, I'm going to once again discuss every single TIE Fighter in both canon and legends. We have a lot of ships to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start with the canon. Number one. The TIE LN Space Superiority Fighter. The first and most famous TIE Fighter variant is the TIE LN. The TIE LN was the standard starfighter of the Galactic Empire. It was designed to be expendable, and as such, it didn't have shields, a hyperdrive, armor, heavy weapons, or even life support. This meant the pilots had to wear special pressurized suits. The standard TIE Fighter was equipped with two laser cannons. The TIE Fighter was a short-range fighter meant to be launched from bases or capital ships and overwhelm enemy forces with sheer numbers. The ship shares design aspects with the V-Wing and ETA-2 Interceptor. The TIE Fighter saw service against the Rebel Alliance throughout the Galactic Civil War, as well as with several pirate groups and Imperial Remnant factions. Number 2. The TIE Advanced V-1 Next we have the experimental TIE Advanced Fighter used by the Imperial Inquisitorius. The fighter was based heavily on the Scimitar and included folding S-foils. The ship only had solar collectors on the inner wings, meaning that while its weapons and other systems could work off the solar energy, the engines had to use fuel. The ship had several upgrades from the standard TIE Fighter, including a hyperdrive and shields, as well as a projectile launcher, in addition to its two laser cannons. Number 3. The TIE Advanced X-1 Darth Vader had his own TIE Advance, which was an advancement of the V-1. Vader's TIE Advance was also equipped with a hyperdrive and shields, as well as life support. It was armed with two laser cannons and a cluster missile launcher. Darth Vader would use it to great effect to destroying Phoenix home and nearly shot down Luke Skywalker before he could destroy the first Death Star. The ship also had high-performance solar cells fitted in the curved wings. Number 4. The TIE SA Bomber For bombing purposes, the Empire utilized the TIE Bomber, which had no hyperdrive or shields, but did have life support in both the cockpit and ordnance pod. The bomber was the main source of anti-emplacement air support for Imperial forces. It was armed with two laser cannons and a missile launcher that could fire concussion missiles, thermal detonators, proton torpedoes, orbital mines, and various other munitions. There was also a variant that could replace this launcher with accommodations for passengers. Number 5. The TIE SH Shuttle The TIE Shuttle was a variant of the TIE Bomber recognized by its outward-facing wings. These were designed to transport Imperial officers between Imperial-class Star Destroyers. Captain Lorth Nida used one when he visited the Executor in order to apologize to Darth Vader. The ship had two laser cannons and, and was equipped with shields and life support, but no hyperdrive. Number 6. The TIE IN Interceptor The TIE Interceptor was far deadlier than its predecessor, identifiable by its arrow-shaped solar panels, each of which was tipped with a laser cannon, giving it up to six. The ship had no hyperdrive or shields, but did have life support systems on board. These ships most notably saw service with the Empire at the Battle of Endor, as well as being flown by Volt Scaris while at Sky Strike Academy, as well as being flown by the Second Sister during her mission to Bracca. Number 7. The TIE Boarding Craft Even though it looks identical to a TIE Bomber, the TIE Boarding Craft was used to transport stormtroopers and to board enemy ships. The ship was equipped with shields and life support, but no hyperdrive, and was armed with two laser cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and missiles and warhead launchers that could fire various types of munitions. These were the ships that were used to board the Profundity after the Battle of Scarif. Number 8. The TIE D Defender The TIE Defender was the brainchild of Grand Admiral Thrawn, which would give the Empire a starfighter far superior to any Rebel snubfighter. The Defender was equipped with a hyperdrive and shields, but no life support. The ship was armed with six laser cannons, two warhead launchers which could fire both concussion missiles and proton torpedoes, and a tractor beam projector. The fighter proved to be deadly to the Rebel forces, but the factor and Lothal was destroyed by the Spectres before the craft could be mass-produced. After this and the loss of Thrawn, the funding was all but halted and redirected to Project Stardust. They did see service throughout the Galactic Civil War and were present at the Battle of Jakku. Number 9. The TIE-D Defender Elite The TIE Defender Elite was an upgraded version of the TIE Defender. With the support of Darth Vader, Thrawn was able to improve the base defender with an increased top speed, heavier armament, and simpler controls. The Elite was armed with eight laser cannons, a warhead launcher that could launch up to six missiles, and a tractor beam projector. It was also equipped with a hyperdrive and shields, but no life support, which meant to pilot it without a pressurized suit, one had to be in atmosphere. The prototype Elite was stolen by Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren, 
but the Empire had built in a kill switch which would shut the Defender down before they could escape Lothal. Volt Scarus would also fly one when Phoenix Squadron tried to run the 7th Fleet's blockade of Lothal. Number 10. The Twin Ion Engine Fighter Prototype The prototype for the TIE Fighter was the very first of the TIE series to be introduced by Sinar Fleet Systems at the request of Grand Moff Tarkin. Sinar was inspired by the V-Wing and Jedi Interceptor, and the prototype was designed to comply with the Imperial design specifications for an unshielded craft. The initial design lacked structural integrity, and as such later models had to be reinforced with wing spars allowing the ship to enter atmosphere. The Empire eventually decided to produce this bulked up version for its standard TIE LN Starfighter. Number 11. The Auto Fighter. The Auto Fighter was a drone model of TIE Fighter. Armed with two laser cannons and equipped with neither a hyperdrive nor shields as far as we know, the ship had no need for life support as it was piloted by a droid brain. The ship was produced by Commodore Visler Corda on Rakenna. Rakenna was eventually liberated by General Lando Calrissian, and Rakenna Resistance was able to take control of these ships, ruining Corda's presentation to the Empire. Nothing else is known about these ships as of yet. Number 12. The TIE GT The TIE GT was an early version of the TIE Fighter meant for bombing. It would eventually evolve into the TIE Bomber. That is all we know about it in canon as of yet. Number 13. The TIE Lander The TIE Lander was a triple-hulled variant that also looked similar to the TIE Bomber. Like the boarding craft, the lander was meant to deploy stormtroopers, but this craft could deploy an entire company. These were most notably used by the Imperial Garrison in Mos Eisley to look for C-3PO and R2-D2. Number 14. The TIE RB Heavy Starfighter The TIE Reinforcement Battery Starfighter was more easily known as the TIE Brute and was a variant of the standard TIE Fighter that had an extra pod housing a pair of powerful laser cannons. The ship had no hyperdrive or shields, but did come equipped with life support. The pilot of the TIE Brute was aided by an MGK-300 droid brain, but the crew could also include a gunner. These were most notably used to pursue the Millennium Falcon inside the Yakadizi Maelstrom. Number 15. The TIE RP Reaper Attack Lander The TIE Reaper was another dropship variant of the TIE Fighter. It was designed to ferry elite troops to hotspots on a battlefield. The ship was armed with two laser cannons and came equipped with hyperdrive and shields, and also most likely with life support. The ship was used by various elite groups like the Death Troopers and the Inquisitorious Purge Troopers. Number 16. The TIE Scout The TIE Scout was a variant of the standard Imperial TIE LN fighter. At least one was embarked on the second Death Star, and that one was used by Ben Solo to travel to Exegol to confront Darth Sidious. Little else is currently known about this ship, although it can be inferred that the ship has a hyperdrive and life support. Number 17. The TIE AG Aggressor the TIE Aggressor was a fast attack medium strike fighter meant to be used against shipping and smuggling, as well as being used as a patrol craft. It was introduced shortly before the Battle of Yavin and was meant to be used as a commerce raider against Alliance smuggling. It was armed with a turret mounting twin light laser cannons and forward mounted medium laser cannons. It had no shields or a hyperdrive. Number 18. The TIE CA Punisher The TIE Punisher was developed for heavy bombardment missions as a way to supplement the Imperial Star Destroyer Force. They were usually carried aboard interdictor star destroyers. They were armed with four mounted light laser cannons, four mounted proton torpedo and concussion missile launchers, and a proton bomb chute. They had no hyperdrive, but did have very strong deflector shields. Number 19, the TIE PH Phantom Multi-Role Starfighter. The TIE Phantom was a multi-role fighter only entrusted to the most experienced pilots. It featured a unique cloaking device, something almost unheard of for a ship of its size. It was crewed by a pilot and a gunner and it was a very rare ship, hence the need for experienced pilots. It had a Class 1 hyperdrive, deflector shield, and a powerful sensor suite. It was armed with forward-mounted medium laser cannons. Now let's move on to the non-Starfighter TIE variants used by the Galactic Empire. Number 20. The TIE SK-X1 Experimental Air Superiority Fighter The TIE Striker was a fighter designed for atmospheric combat. The ship had no hyperdrives or shields, but did curiously enough feature life support. The ship was technically capable of space travel, but it was not designed to operate in a vacuum. The Striker was armed with four laser cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and a proton bomb chute, and the enlarged pod allowed it to serve as a cargo transport or shuttle. They were most notably deployed at the Citadel Tower on Scarif, but would also see service at the Battle of Jakku. Number 21. The TIE Crawler The TIE Crawler, or Sentry Tank, was a model of tank that resembled a TIE Fighter, but with treads supporting the cockpit instead of wings. Nothing else is currently known about it in canon. Next up are the TIE Fighters used by various Imperial Remnant factions. Number 22. The Outland TIE Fighter 
This modification of a regular TIE fighter was flown by Moff Gideon during the Battle of Navarro, in which it met its end at the hands of the Mandalorian. The fighter features all the hallmarks of a standard TIE, but also featured a unique folding wing. The solar panels were able to fold similar to the S-foils on other fighters. The ship also featured landing gear that was similar to that of the X-Wing, which may mean it was made with parts of broken X-Wings. We can also infer that it may have upgraded systems, which may include life support. However, we only ever see it flying in atmosphere, so it's more likely that it still doesn't feature life support, shields, or a hyperdrive. It does, however, seem to have some armor upgrades, as well as upgrades to its avionics. Now let's move on to fighters that were used by factions other than the Galactic Empire, starting off with the Mining Guild. Number 23. The TIE MG Mining Guild Starfighter. The Mining Guild TIE Fighter was a modification of the TIE LN used by the Mining Guild during its association with the Galactic Empire. To make this fighter distinct from the Imperial ships, it was given a yellow color scheme and had a notch cut out of its solar panels. This meant it had better visibility, but worse performance than the standard TIE. Next up are the TIE Fighters used by the First Order. Number 24. The TIE FO Space Superiority Starfighter. The First Order used their own version of the standard TIE Fighter, the TIE FO. It was in general an upgrade of the TIE Fighter, but was still far inferior to most New Republic and Resistance snub fighters, and was still intended to be used in large numbers. It could be equipped with a hyperdrive, but this was not standard. It also had rudimentary deflector shields and still no life support. It was armed with two laser cannons and a secondary weapon of some description, probably some kind of warhead launcher. Number 25. The TIE SF Space Superiority Fighter. The Special Forces TIE Fighter was a further upgrade of the standard TIE used by the Special Forces of the First Order. They were distinguishable by their red markings. They had two seats, allowing for a pilot and a rear gunner. The ship was equipped with life support, shields, and a hyperdrive. It was armed with two laser cannons fixed forward and a twin laser cannon turret facing rearward that could rotate. The turret also featured a missile launcher that could fire concussion missiles, magpulse warheads, and torpedoes. Number 26. The TIE Whisper. The TIE Whisper was an upgrade of the Special Forces TIE and seemed to feature most of the same features as the SF but it was likely faster and saw incremental improvements to shields, weapons, and hyperdrive. Nothing else is currently known about it. Number 27. The First Order TIE Bomber The First Order TIE Bomber was an evolution of the TIE Bomber used by the Empire. It was armed with four laser cannons as well as its bombs, but it's likely it could drop a wide variety of ordnance. It is also likely that, like its fighter counterparts, it was equipped with a hyperdrive, shields, and life support. Its wings were unique on the bomber as they resembled the wings of the TIE Silencer. Number 28. The TIE BA Baron Space Superiority Interceptor. The TIE Baron was a fighter that we have only seen in the hands of First Order Flight Baron Major Elric Vonreg. It was an evolution of the TIE Interceptor, featuring a lot of the same upgrades as mentioned before. We know it had a hyperdrive and likely featured shields and life support. It was armed with four laser cannons and two Magpulse warhead launchers. It's unknown if the red paint is the standard color scheme of these ships, or if it was a custom paint job for Vonreg. Number 29. The TIE VN Space Superiority Fighter. The TIE Silencer is another advancement of the TIE Interceptor, as well as the TIE Defender and the TIE Advanced, all rolled up into one ship. It was equipped with shields, a hyperdrive, and life support. It was armed with four laser cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and two missile launchers, capable of launching concussion missiles, magpulse warheads, and proton torpedoes. One of these ships was the personal fighter of Kylo Ren during the evacuation of Dakar, as well as the pursuit of the Resistance fleet. There were more known to be out in the galaxy, but it's likely that these ships were exceedingly rare. Number 30. The TIE WI Modified Interceptor. The modified TIE Interceptor used by Kylo Ren, also known as the TIE Whisper, not to be confused with the TIE Whisper seen previously, was a custom TIE Interceptor used by Supreme Leader Kylo Ren during his search for Exegol and during his mission to Pasana, where it was destroyed. The ship is known to have four laser cannons, but it looks to have one of the turrets off the Special Forces TIEs, and other TIE Whisper, which means that it also had an additional two laser cannons, as well as the warhead launcher. It is unknown if this ship has a rear gunner seat or if the turret is controlled from the main cockpit. We also know that the ship has life support and a hyperdrive, and likely also has shields. It is unknown if this ship was a model in mass production, a custom order from Sinar Jamis, or a completely custom build by Kylo Ren. There was at least one more in existence as we see it at the Death Star when Kylo Ren confronted Rey. The fighter was later stolen by Rey and crashed on Ock 2. Moving on to non-Starfighter variants used by the First Order. Number 31. The TIE ES Assault Shuttle. The TIE Echelon was a transport shuttle used by the First Order. It featured shields and likely also had life support and possibly even a hyperdrive. It could transport up to 12 passengers and cargo, 
as well as at least one Treadspeeder. It was armed with four heavy laser cannons and one dual mount light laser cannon turret. One of these was used to deliver First Order Stormtroopers on Batu to deal with Resistance Insurgents. Now we have the fighters used by the Final Order and the Sith Eternal. Number 32. The TIE DG Starfighter. The TIE Dagger, also known as the Sith TIE Fighter, was the standard fighter for the Sith Eternal and the Final Order. Like all the TIEs for the First Order, it was produced by Sinar Jamis Fleet Systems. It was armed with two laser cannons and two heavy laser cannons. Like the TIEs of Palpatine's former Empire, the TIEs of the new one were much better than those of the First Order. They did not have shields, but it's unknown if they had hyperdrives or life support. They were much more suited to attacks with overwhelming firepower. Their only known use was during the Battle of Exegol. So a few other ships that really don't fit into the TIE series, but are either inspirations for or derivatives of the type. Those being in canon, the Scimitar Sith Infiltrator, Eta-2 Interceptor, V-Wing, and the canon-only Black Ace flown by Griff Halloran.